Okay, guys, the last question of this paper is 10.2, and it is your last geometry rider. So just be careful, look out for all the relationships, and work through it with me slowly, and we will be fine. Okay, so 10.2 says, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle, and CG is a tangent to the circle at G. Okay, stop right there. O is the center, okay, and CG is a tangent. Okay, so... What do we know firstly? We know that this line here is a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle, which means that it subtends a 90 degrees on the circumference. But we also know, we get a different color out, that this line here is a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. So we know that that line there also subtends a 90 degrees. Okay, can be a bit confusing, but important. Tangents, obviously we're gonna have a lot of tan chord theorems, and I'm not gonna fill all of them in because we don't know which ones we're gonna to have to use. So just bear that in mind. Then it says the straight line from C passing through O cuts the circle at A and B. Okay, self-explanatory. Diameter DOE is perpendicular to CA. Okay, they haven't put that on our diagram. DOE is perpendicular to CA. Okay, no, it is on our diagram. There's our lovely little perpendicular thing. Okay, so perpendicular relationship over there. Very important. Okay, then it says GE and CA intersect at F, self-explanatory, and chords DG, BG, and AG are drawn. They're basically just saying that those are straight lines. Okay, so, first it says, prove that DGFO is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so there are a few ways you can prove cyclic quadrilaterals. You can either say that their interior opposite angles are supplementary, or you can use exterior angle of a cyclic quad. I'm going to look and see what relationships we have. Okay, well, immediately, remember DGFO is this shape here, DGFO that quad over there okay so we immediately know that angle we can say d o f which is this angle here is 90 degrees angle d o f equals 90 degrees and that was given to us they told us that those two lines are perpendicular and now if we look here remember we established that G3 plus G4, which is that whole angle there, is also 90 degrees. G3 plus G4 is 90 degrees because of angle in a semicircle. Remember, diameter subtends 90 degrees on the circumference. Therefore, we can say that DGFO is cyclic because the interior opposite angles are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees, 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay. Secondly, it says prove that CG is equal to CF. CG, which is this line here, is equal to CF. Okay. So, Remember how you can prove equal lines. If you can prove that this angle is equal to that angle, then automatically that side is equal to that side. Okay, so let's have a look. We're trying to prove that this angle here is equal to that angle there. Okay, so what can we see? Well, first of all, if we take this angle here, this is an angle, remember, this whole line here is a tangent. So, from the tangent to the chord is equal to the angle that the chord subtends, which is this angle over here, okay? So, let's first say angle G1 plus G2 is equal to, let me check that angle, it's angle D, because of tan chord theorem. Okay, 
So now let's have a look. How do we relate that angle to F1? Well, we've just proved that this blue quad is cyclic. And what do we know about exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral? It is equal to the interior opposite angle. So F1 is indeed equal to D. F1 is equal to angle D, exterior angle of cyclic quad, because we've just proved that. And therefore, um, F1 is equal to G1 plus G2, and therefore, GC is equal to CF, because sides opposite equal angles okay easy peasy 10.2.2 says if it is further given that co is 11 units and de is 14 okay let's fill that in co this whole side is 11 units and de is 14 okay if we have a circle this is the center and they give it to us that the whole diameter is 14. I hope you guys agree with me that the radii are each going to be 7. So that means that we have a radius here of 7, radius here of 7, and a radius up until B of 7. Okay, so this whole side here is 7. Okay, so if it is given to us that those are the lengths, calculate the length of BC. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have this line OC. O is the center, C sits on the outside, and then B is over here. We know that the whole length is 11 because that's what was given to us. And we know that this radius OB is seven. So that means that OC or BC, this variable here, must be 11 minus seven. Okay, so BC, equal to you can say that the radius is equal to one half diameter equals seven and you can say that BC is equal to 11 minus 7 which is four units okay easy peasy so this length over here is four okay so now next question says find the length of CG okay so let's go and take a look. C, G over here. Okay, this is where your similarity needs to come into play, guys. And I'm gonna try and break this down nicely. Remember, we established that this length over here is equal to that length over there. But now, if I look, I've got this big triangle here. A, G, C, okay. And then I've got this little triangle over here on the outside of our circle, C, B, G, okay? We've just found B, C, it is four units. And I know that A, C is equal to two radii because there's a seven over here, a seven over there, and a four over there, so it is, 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 4 is 28. So I know that AC is 28. And then GC is a common side, which we are trying to find the length of. And if we look at these two triangles, okay? Angle C. Oh, actually, let me take a look. Okay, so angle C is the common angle, okay? It is involved in both triangles. Angle G1, this is G1 over here, this little angle here, is equal to, oh wow, no, not there, in the little triangle. Angle G1, which is that little one over there, is equal to angle A because of tan chord theorem, okay? If you look at the tangent and you make the angle to the chord, it is equal to the angle subtended by the chord, okay? And then obviously we have a remaining angle. So we can say in triangle CGB, 
and triangle CAG. Firstly, G1 is equal to A because of the tan chord theorem. Angle C is common. And then obviously angle, the last angle, which will be, okay, G1 is equal to A. So that last angle would be GBC and AGC. GBC and, whoopsie, not and, equal to AGC remaining angle. Okay, and therefore, triangle CGB is similar to triangle CAG because of angle, angle, angle. Okay, so what have we established? We're trying to find the length of CG. Okay, we've got CG over here and we've got CG over there. Let me actually go back down to our ratios. Okay, so guys, if you write it in the right order, so remember that this angle is going to equal that angle, this one is going to equal that one, etc. If you write them in the right order, okay, we are trying to find CG. So over here, we've got a CG. If you're going to use that side, you need to use the corresponding side in the other triangle, okay? And we know the length of BC because we just found it over here. BC is equal to four. So if we want to use BC, we use that arc there. And whatever we do in the first triangle, we have to do in the second triangle. So we can say, therefore, CG over BC from the first triangle is equal to CA, match the arcs. We started with the little one, so we start with the little one. CA over CG because of similarity. Guys, you need to have this as a reason. And now we get CG squared is equal to BC we found was 4 and CA I think we found was 28. Let me double check. Yeah, because remember we've got this 4 or this 7 plus this 4 plus the other radius of 7. So we're going to have 28. Okay which means that CG squared is equal to four times two is, okay, I'm going to use my calculator. Let me actually just double check my maths. I might be talking rubbish. Okay, it is not 28, guys. Seven plus seven is 14 plus four is 18, not 28. Okay, so don't make that mistake. AC is 18 not 28, okay. So, we carry on, and we get four times eight is 32, plus 40 is 72, which means that CG is equal to the square root of 72 units. Okay, you can simplify the third, but you don't necessarily have to. And then lastly, C says calculate the size of angle E. Okay, so, Let's go and have a look back at our very messy diagram. Where is angle E? Okay, angle E is this angle down here. Okay. And we have just found that GC is root 72. Oopsie, 72. Okay. Which means that, okay, let me clear this up a little bit. Okay. Here we found that this is root 72 and remember we proved that these two sides are equal. So this side here is also root 72. But now remember guys that this whole side over here was equal to the radius of 7 plus BC which was 4 which is equal to 11. Okay, so now if we look over here, if we redraw this triangle down at the bottom we have the center of the circle, F and E, and we're trying to find angle E, okay? We know that this over here is seven because it's a radius, 
And OF, if we look over here, is equal to this total length minus FC, which is root 72. So this is 11 minus root 72. Okay? So now, if we look in our triangle, we've got a lovely right angle triangle and we've got two sides. So here, this is the adjacent side to that angle E, and this is the opposite side. Which ratio uses opposite and adjacent? It's tan. So tan of angle E, tan of angle E. Okay, first of all, you want to say that. Let's just establish some side relationships. So firstly, you want to say that OF is equal to OC minus FC, which is what we found. That is equal to that whole length 11 that was given to us, minus the root 72 that we found. And remember, those two sides were equal. Okay. And we know that OE is equal to 7 because it's a radius. Okay. So remember, we have this diagram. The radius is there. This is O perpendicular. Um, e is there and F is there. So this is 11 minus root 72. And we're trying to find this angle here. So tan of angle E is equal to the opposite, 11 minus root 72, over the adjacent, which is 7. And that is going to give us, well, if you say E, you can say shift tan of all of that. So shift tan of 11 minus the square root of 72, all divided by 7, and that is going to give us 19,76 degrees. Okay, so hopefully you guys, when you see immediately that you have a lovely right angle triangle, with your right angle and the angle that you're trying to find and you already have the lengths of two sides, you can easily use a trigonometric ratio. Okay, so guys, tips and tricks for your geometry writers. Just know your theorems off by heart. Know immediately that if you have a tangent, it's gonna spur a whole bunch of relationships and you should know them right now. If I woke you up in the middle of the night and I said, what does the diameter do on the circumference? You should say it subtends 90 degrees and go back to sleep although that would be terrifying. But just make sure you know all of your Euclidean geometry, guys. And also, like I said here, trig is related. Everything is related. If you find a 90 degrees in your Euclidean geometry and you can use it in a ratio, throw in some trig. No one's going to stop you. That answer is going to be 100%. Okay, so read your love letter. Understand what it's saying to you. Look at your diagrams and know all of the theorems and fill in stuff. Use colors. Make a big mess as long as you understand it you will understand your Euclidean. Okay, that is question 10.2.